Hello and welcome to the 40th episode of The Real List, a podcast about our real list, which is a list of reels, as in list of movies, <laughs> for those who don't understand the title, if there are any of you out there. I could understand it. I really stretched to make this title happen. I've talked about how tenuous it is before. Yeah, anyway. every time I bring it up to somebody, they're like, real list? Yeah, I'm well, like... I mean, that's the pun. It's supposed to be a pun, but we're not like realist reviewers at all, because we know nothing about movies or movie making. No, we don't. So, uh, I've written an entire movie script, but I know nothing about this. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm your host, Ellis. And I'm your host, Gloria, and today's selection is from me. Yes. This is Spirit, the Stallion of Cimarron, uh, also known as just Spirit. Why did you have so much trouble with that? What do you mean? It sounded like you were really sounding out the S on Spirit. Like you weren't sure what the title was, like you were reading it again for the first time. <laughs> anyway listen i'm tired we dealt with a child today we leave, did leave me alone <laughs> this movie came out in 2002 directed by kelly asbury uh screenplay by john fusco uh starring matt damon matt damon's the narrator for this matt movie. damon is the voice of the horse yes and i was during the entirety of us watching this movie i kept referring to him as the first horse on mars uh <laughs> um so this is a movie that takes place in uh, the 19th century, yeah. uh, following wild horses uh, in the West, and Spirit is uh, born at the beginning of the movie. We get to see his birth, <laughs> which I felt was so extra. There's not a lot that I have to complain about this movie. Honestly, I really liked it. I'm glad but, you enjoyed but, it. Man, they could have cut 30 seconds out of the beginning, and it would have been... Maybe better for it, although this movie's runtime is already kind of short. Mm. It's an 83 minute movie. Um, but we get to watch him being born and then suckle milk from his mother, which is just a little bit much, <laughs> if you ask me. I, and it doesn't set the tone for the rest of the movie at all. Because there's no gratuities in I mean, the rest of the movie. I mean, it's just early life. I, I mean, it's it's a story about his life, you know, what he went through and everything. Yeah, but he didn't go through anything until he was an adult. Uh, they could have just introduced him as, like, I'm, I am the head of the Cimarron tribe. They could have skipped the first five minutes. Again, I understand why they didn't, because it's a really short movie. But, you know... For a short movie, it gives you a lot. Yeah, I mean... I thought there was going to be more, honestly. I went, oh, wow, the movie ends there. Like, there... But I realized that if they wanted to continue the story further, they really would have had a lot to unpack. Um, go ahead and... Yeah, I mean, you can tell people about what the basic plotline is for people who haven't seen this movie. It's, it's basically... Uh, what is it? It's... He goes and finds the he prospectors. He goes find and the, find the prospectors. Or whatever they are. Or whatever. Uh, they work for the army or whatever, I guess. Yeah, they're exploring the wild, wild west. Um, and so he gets captured by these people, and uh, they bring him to their their camp, I guess, or yep, whatever. They have a little fort. Yeah, their little fort in the in out in the in the desert or whatever. Out in the nondescript western location, which is an amalgam of. Arizona, Colorado, Nebraska, Montana, like Utah. it's yeah, it's it's like a, just just a just, just like a giant mess. Yeah, it it's it's like if you made an old west Minecraft world and all the biomes you can walk across in about 10 minutes. Uh, because they go from like the Grand Canyon to this, you know, great forest and mountains and, you know, uh like Arches National Park, and like uh, it's all of the national parks if you picked them up and put them all right next to one another, which makes this movie beautiful, just beautiful. Like this is an incredibly pretty. It's not bad for a two thousand two movie. No, and well, that's the thing. It's an amalgam of two D and three D animation, sort of like um, Treasure Planet, uh, which yes. love that movie. Uh, but this is. It's a gorgeous film because they take advantage of all these amazing locations in the West. Mm -hmm. um, the actual history part of it is where is where I start to go. What? What? Huh? Uh, oh, you know what? 
sub out one word and it sort of makes sense. I believe the colonel said Northern Pacific instead of Union Pacific. But it's the Transcontinental Railroad, so it's definitely not the Northern Pacific Railroad. They also have ten-wheelers, which is probably not accurate. But foamy nonsense aside, uh, the, the <laughs> you, army... As soon as you saw the steamer. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah. Well, you braced me for it. You were like, there are trains in this movie. And yeah, I was like, oh, there, okay. There are trains. I'm ready for bad train physics. Uh, we didn't get too much of that, but the locomotive does kind of explode in a giant fireball for no yeah. reason. Yeah, tumbles um, down a hill and explodes into another engine. Uh, I don't think that's how that would work, but... Anyway, go watch uh, episode 69 of Well, There's Your Problem for more nice. train wreck physics. Uh, but, yeah, so they try to break Spirit. Yeah, they, they, they try to break him. Well, first they give him the hair. They try to groom him first. And that was oh a great scene. That's a great sequence, honestly. It, it goes on a little bit long, but it's pretty, it's funny enough. Yeah. You know? Uh, they, try to, they, try to, they try to groom him and stuff, and then they're like, they try to break him in, you know, and nobody can break them in, and then they're like, let's starve them for three yeah. days. And so they starve them for three days, and then they bring a Native American, as they say, hostel, and they tie him up to the post for three days. A different post. A I different... thought it was going to be the same post. Yeah, it was a I, post. When I first saw this movie, I thought they were also going to tie him up to the same post. Yeah. But... Well, they just called it the post. They don't... It's not like the post in the stable or the post outside of the stable. They just call it the post every time. Yeah. All two so they, times. So they tie him to a different post, and then they're just, he's just out there. Yep. And then... Someone chucks a knife to him? Yeah, they're doing, like, they're doing calls to each other, I guess, and then the knife gets thrown, and then everybody wakes up. You don't see where that knife comes from, and he's, like, in the middle of the compound, so somebody had an arm to get him that knife. If it was a fellow Native American, you know, fellow tribesman who's outside the walls just hurling a knife which those there are guards on those walls i don't even know how that worked basically i'm pretty sure god dropped him that knife um just or, just he go homie <laughs> or me in call of duty at the start of the match just like whoop, throw it at the enemy spawn and see if it lands on somebody uh um I've... and <laughs> and then they 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 try to the the colonel tries to break spirit in one last time and then sort of succeeds or spirit fakes him out yeah and spirit does a lot of faking people out in this movie yes yes he does and then they escape together yep and him then and, him and what's his name what's the little creek little creek him and little creek escape together um and spirit meets meets his boothang he brings yeah, his, that's right. That's brings, right. That's brings right. Spirit to his tribe, and Spirit meets his boothang. I was really wondering when the, the obligatory horse love interest would show up. Um, and I will make, like, no additional comments on the amount of awakenings that may or may not have occurred because of this movie. But they did, they did make, they did feminize a horse. Like, they she's did. got smoother lines. They did. Uh, but... Never like this movie does a decent job at keeping horses horse shaped. Like it does not go too far to anthropomorphize, like physically anthropomorphize uh, the animals in the movie, which I think is a good thing. Um, and I mean, we should probably talk about how they don't say anything. Like, oh yeah, there's <laughs> there's really no talking in this movie. It's it's just horses, and then the people talk like like. You know, the, the people in the compound talked, uh, the Native Americans talked to each other, so the Native Americans talked to the horses. Uh, yeah, but the horses don't talk yeah, back, Yeah, the horses don't talk. This is, this is like, an actual, you know, The horse only movie. horse that has a voice is Matt Damon's inner, Ca inner monologue. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, only, the only really horse that's doing the talking is Spirit's thoughts. <laughs> Do you think this movie is just... A dream that Mark Watney had while he was trapped on Mars. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I, <laughs> I need I need that. I need this movie cut into the middle of The Martian, <laughs> where he just at the end of the How movie long is the Martian? he wakes up. Uh, I don't know. It's it's not it's not short enough that like it wouldn't be good. It wouldn't work. Uh, the Martian runtime. Two hours. Two hours. Yeah, that's a long movie. Uh, 
you know, it, it wouldn't be good. I mean, maybe if you made like a condensed version of this movie, uh, yeah, again, you just, cut out you blips. cut out the first part, and then yeah, you intercut this movie, and also importantly, in the scene where Spirit is running down the hill away from the locomotive that's tumbling afterwards, you cut in the Indiana Jones theme. Um, you said that, and you were like, <laughs> "This needs to happen." I, I need. I I bet there are no original thoughts on the internet, so I bet someone's already done that. But I'm pretty sure you could find it. <laughs> if not, I know what the next. Uh, I know what uh, the next post of this channel is going to be. That's a joke. I'm not doing that. What What are your opinions of this movie? Well, I did want to talk about the fact that there is no. We also only explain half the plot. But honestly, you either come in here and you know this movie, or you come in here and you don't care to have it explained to you. Because we're not here to explain the plot of a movie. We are here to talk about it. Um, for all those out there that have not seen this movie. You can pause this episode, go watch this movie Where on was Hulu, it? on Hulu, and come back, and you will not have lost lost that much time. You can even skip the first couple minutes. At my recommendation, you don't miss anything. Um, All you're missing is birth. Yeah, I mean, is this your birth video? Uh, <laughs> uh, point is, it's not a long movie, and yeah, it has a tiny amount of dialogue. Um, and the fact that they managed to do so much with that, uh, without that, I suppose, is really impressive. Mm -hmm. I mean, we think of DreamWorks as, well, the studio that made Shrek. They, they have they have some they have some good movies. I'm I'm thinking of Shark like Tale. Uh, I said good movies. <laughs> you didn't like Shark Tale. I don't I don't have a personal opinion on Shark Tale. But it's not a good movie. I think it's a good movie. <laughs> okay. Uh, you're entitled to that opinion. I still love you. Um, anyway. This movie is, in a sense, a masterpiece. It is masterfully done in terms of the visuals. Even yes. though, the, Even though there's, there's, nothing, there's <sighs> nothing that's necessarily stand out, they make use of the setting... Very well. Which, yeah, which which helps it be extraordinary. There's the scene with, um, when they're taking Spirit to, to the, the camp, for, yeah. to the compound in Wait, the lightning storm. That was just about to bring that up. I was literally just about to bring that up. I just love the, how it goes from dark to, like, you see the purple in the sky and the clouds and everything, and it's just... Yeah, and... The, they use the body language of the horses and the sounds of the horses, which are all real sounds, if I'm to understand correctly. Um, I mean, it'd be really uh, crazy to think that they didn't use actual horse sounds. Well, I mean, you never know. Uh, I mean, I suppose there wasn't, like, an internet stock library of horse sounds in 2002, but you'd be surprised what you can just make, you know? Uh, there, there are entire departments dedicated to making up sounds. But the the body language and the sort of vocalizations of the creatures in the movie of the you know the non-human characters do an outstanding job because not only is it good, it's almost unprecedented. You don't have movies like this. No. Uh, because it's hard to do right, and it's hard to do to to capture attention to maintain attention when you don't have any dialogue uh it it helps uh someone like me who is a deaf son of a gun uh because normally i have to crank the movies up so i can hear the dialogue like not the normal amount like an advanced amount um but i refuse to turn on subtitles because that's cheating uh but i use but, subtitles all the time yeah well i just don't look at them uh and this movie, you don't need to do that, because, like, none... There's no dialogue. Nothing, nothing that anyone says matters except for Matt Damon saying mares. <laughs> Which is I the best word in this movie. I want to I wanna talk about the budget and how much it made. So, the budget for this movie was $80 million. Mm -hmm. And in the box office, it made one... one... You can try that again. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> it's 122.6 million bucks. And that's a return on investment. That's a pretty good return. Um, and then it had a spinoff, like, years later, though. Yeah, 
What is that about? I don't know. I refuse to watch spinoffs. That's not accurate. What do you mean? I'm sure you've watched a spinoff of something. No. Did you watch Torchwood? What's that? Alright, never mind. I'm surprised you didn't watch Torchwood, actually. It was a spinoff of Doctor Who with Captain Jack Harkness. Uh, oh, I I tried to, just couldn't get into it. Oh, really? Huh. I, oh, I, haven't, I haven't touched it. I haven't tried to. I just, I don't have time to watch things. So, that's why we have this podcast, so that I have to watch things. Exactly. Um... We did establish that the eagle is his dad. Um, <laughs> that was that was one of the running jokes when we were watching this thing. Honestly, I couldn't shut up. I really wanted to appreciate this movie, but I couldn't stop riffing on it because it's Matt Damon as a horse. Uh, I I really like this movie. It's a really good movie, but I couldn't get over certain I love, things. I love how this movie is really well animated, like you said before, like... The, the oh, attention, yeah. the attention to detail, like in the scenery and everything, it. it what are you looking up? I'm just, just keep talking. <laughs> um, with from you know the the grassy plains to the the where were they the the desert mm -hmm. to uh, would you consider the the area where they were with the the rocks like I mean that was the, supposed the to be the Grand Canyon uh, I think, and yeah it's definitely in the desert. But yeah, the, just the attention to so much detail, and then even like in where they're where the horses are pulling the railroad, like the the, the train. Mm -hmm. It's I love the attention to detail. I really want to know if the scene of them hauling the horse over the mountain is based in any historical precedent, because it sounds to me, it looks to me like something that would have happened, but I can't think of any time that I know of it happening. Then again, I'm not really. A Western Railroad guy, which is where this would have happened the most. Mm -hmm. um, you should ask. You but, should ask one somebody. Yeah, honestly, like Tyler and Weibold might know, or or like Heiss and uh, and Layton as well might know, uh, like an instance of this sort of thing happening. I'm sure it's happened. I just can't come up with an instance of it happening. I mean, on a greater sense. I mean, I did ask you. I was like, is this like historically correct? <laughs> yeah. Well, and and while I'm not sure that scene specifically is. I'm sure it happened, especially because delivering these locomotives to railheads in in remote locations was sometimes a tremendous task. Not even necessarily um, in the U.S., mm -hmm. but if you talk about railroad building in places like Africa, sometimes you would have to get a locomotive, put it on a boat, bring that boat up to the coast, haul the locomotive inland, put it on a different boat in a river send it up the river a and boat? then it, yeah and then haul it over land again to get to where they wanted to build a railroad between like a place where you could get materials out and the mine for those materials but that's that's a whole thing um uh i wanted to to say something else serious but before i say that when he gets the name spirit at the very end of the movie mm -hmm. does that mean when they go through the desert beforehand. Little Creek has been through the desert on a horse with no name. <laughs> what? I don't understand the connection you're it's making. It's okay. No, that's no, okay. Someone will. Someone out there. Um, <coughs> and I don't remember the important thing I want to talk about. Oh, right. The animation of this movie. So... People talk about sometimes that Treasure Planet is the movie that killed Disney's 2D animation. Uh, and how there was this whole conspiracy as to, like, was it done on purpose? Did they tank the movie on purpose so that they could can the 2D animation division? Which is pro which probably has a grain of truth in it. That was also a 2002 film. This was? Treasure Planet was. Oh. Uh, so, I don't know when DreamWorks canned their 2D animation studio... But this, when this came out, was the last year that Disney had a 2D animation studio. Um, and this also came out the same year, sorry, not the same year, but the same, like, awards cycle as Spirited Away. This lost the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature to Spirited Away, which is totally fair. I mean, yes, uh, I mean, Spirited Away is a phenomenal movie and did deserve to win. But there are so many movies, I feel like there are so many movies that, even that ones that we've reviewed, that... Had they come out in a different year, they would have handily taken awards. This is one of them. I mean, Spirit got a good, pretty amount of awards. Mm -hmm. um, 
It's but a good movie. I it, mean, it does. This it is this deserved. is a this is another one of my childhood films. Like this is a, one of the movies that I used to watch on repeat all the time. Like I used to just watch this movie all the time. I even <laughs> tried to get Audrey to watch this movie at one point, and she was just not interested because there was no talking. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough, especially when when dealing with a young kid. We were supposed to watch this with her over the weekend, but it ended up not working out because I was yeah. trying to record some other stuff. Um, if you're if you've looked at the Iron Horseman Chronicles <laughs> channel lately, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, anyway, buy trading cards. We have trading cards. Um, Steam Locomotive trading cards. There'll be a, a, a link in the description of the Kickstarter. It's like 70 or 80% funded, and I ordered the cards today. Buy trading cards, people. Buy trading cards. Um, unfortunately, we do not have the locomotive from this movie in the trading cards saying, oh, that's what it was. When, when you see the locomotive in this movie... It's, it's 2D animation. Uh, or I was under the impression that it was completely 2D animation. And I, I kept going back and forth because I wasn't quite sure because I'm not a big animated movie guy. I don't I don't know anything about filmmaking, to mm -hmm. come back to that. Um, and I was going, this looks 2D, but it seems to have aspects of 3D. And I'm looking at the locomotive and going, man, that is like a... It's a weird... It's got a weird amount of detail. It's, like, detailed in some respects, but not detailed in others. And I'm going, if this is, like, hand-drawn stuff, why did they skimp on the detail in this? Why is it, like, three concentric rings in the spoke box instead of the dogs and, and everything? And, you know, the little bits. And then I realized during the, the Indiana Jones boulder scene that it's because that's a 3D asset. That's a that's a piece of 3D animation, and like a lot of the other stuff is 2D, but that is 3D, and they made it 3D so that they could tumble it down a hill. Um, uh, also, also, I've noticed. I wait. I understand what you're talking about because in the scene where they try to tame Spirit, mm -hmm. when the soldiers turn around, they become 3D. Yeah, I noticed there were a couple of instances with 3D human characters and if you're not looking for it it's not very noticeable but when you notice it it's like whoa those people look different mm -hmm. you know uh i have noticed it i know exactly what you're talking about i don't think this movie did as good of a job as treasure planet at blending the 2d and 3d but because of the limited amount of 3d in this movie it doesn't suffer for it no um i mean I it law it, it was in the running for an Academy Award. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, and it would have been fighting up against Treasure Planet as well, which Treasure Planet came out, oh November. Okay, so it wouldn't have been in the same award cycle. No, so, it would be next year. So what did? No, 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 no. I take that back. Treasure Planet lost Best Animated Feature to Spirited Away as well. Okay. Wait, when did Spirited Away come out? Was it like in December? Oh, probably because it released in Japan and then it released in the U.S. afterward. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, that'll do you. Um, Hans Zimmer wrote the soundtrack. Hans Zimmer wrote the soundtrack. That's, that's another, like, feather in the hat of this movie. Uh, do you, do you not know the significance of, of Hans Zimmer? No. No, he, he's done, like, basically like all the best movie scores uh um he did i mean i would i would call it interstellar but i'm not you haven't seen interstellar is that yeah um glider black hawk down hannibal last summer i madagascar da vinci code simpsons movie come from panda uh sherlock holmes the 2009 one okay um call of duty he worked on he worked on the music for call of duty at modern warfare 2 which is hilarious uh, and the score for Crisis 2, which, that is a great score. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, he did stuff for Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, he, he, um... Oh, and the Dark Knight. Yeah, he, he did some stuff for Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh... Or, sorry, he was, he was... Supervising? He, he gave, yeah, he, he was supervising. Mentoring, and, you know, you, yeah, and then he say. did like the other Pirates of the Caribbean. You know, I've never movies. seen all of the Pirates of the Caribbean. I don't think anyone has, and frankly, I don't blame them. 
And you can watch the first has. three and be done. Uh, but yeah, no, he did Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. Nice. Um, those are like the ones where, where, those are the ones where I think Hans Zimmer, like, I think of those movies when I think of Hans Zimmer, at least before Interstellar came out. And this is not the Hans Zimmer podcast, but the guy deserves a lot of props. And when we do a movie where he was the composer on it, it's going to get mentioned again. The soundtrack will get mentioned on that movie because he's a boss. Actually, he did um, he did uh, the soundtrack for Game of Shadows. I can't oh, remember cool. if I I can't remember if I mentioned him on there, but oh, he also did Inception. Oh, I've um, seen Inception. Yeah, okay, that's the other one I was thinking of. And I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on. He just has he has credits and credits and credits. He did the score of Dunkirk, which I would love to watch with you, but you probably wouldn't. It probably wouldn't grab Not you. into war movies. Yeah, it's it's a really weird movie uh, in the way that it's choreographed, in the way that the, the storylines line up, because it's three different stories. I I would love... Oh, he did to, Superman. Yeah. I would love to catch you on a good day where you're, you know, you've got an open mind and you can experience that movie because it's not a normal war movie, mostly because it's not a normal movie. It's, it's something special. Um... Yeah, he also did Dune. Okay. Which we need to watch. Uh, that is on the list. <laughs> that's on the list. And it's uh, also on HBO Max. Anyway, uh, we wanna... already know what we're watching next, and we need to talk about star ratings. And we're sorry to your mother uh, for not doing uh, Bronx Tale yet. Sorry, Mom. We don't have a way to watch it. <laughs> I think she has it on DVD. Oh, that would be very helpful, actually. That would That would solve some problems. Why didn't we think of this two weeks ago? Because I have an idea. Oh, God. All right, <laughs> mares. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to give this four stars. I Maybe maybe that's maybe that's lowballing it, but I'm definitely happy with a four star, four out of five stars. I'm going to give it a four and a half. Four and a half? Okay. Because it is my childhood movie, but also, like, you know, it aged very well, though. Oh, it, oh it's For, so it, 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 it aged very well, and I'm so glad that we got to watch this, because I've been wanting to watch this with you for a while now. I'm glad we got to watch this movie, and I'm glad it wasn't the other movie that I thought it was. What, because Black I Beauty? Can, yeah, because I can deal with the animated horse movie, then more the, the animated horse movie in which the horse does not talk, as opposed to the non-animated horse movie in which the horse does talk. Um... I, I think this is the better kind. I mean, the horse doesn't actually talk. It's like a narrated movie like this one is. Well, that that trailer made it seem like the horse doesn't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and I liked about how this movie, <laughs> we just got horse noises all the time. And I was okay with that. You um, want that on a t-shirt? <laughs> this movie made it seem like the horse doesn't shut up. <laughs> Oh, man. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> I, there was something else I wanted to say about this. Oh, yeah, to come back to it, it's just like, there's not a lot of dialogue in this movie. There's, there's a lot of substance, but you got to pay attention to it. And therefore, it's really good that it's a short movie. Stop it. I, I, there was hair in it. Oh, okay. Uh, it's really good that this is, it, the movie gets in and it gets out. And as long as you don't worry about what happens in the next five or ten years, you also want to know where the apples came from. Well, yeah, where the hell did where the hell did the the uh, what was his name? Little little Creek. little Creek. Where the hell did we keep getting all those apples? I mean, they weren't that far from a lot of trees, babe. Yeah, but I don't. I don't hold on. Johnny Appleseed. Hold on, hold on. Our apples native. Thanks for smacking this. I am. Terrible. Are apples native to North America? No. So where did he get the apples? <laughs> the apple only apple trees are not native to North America. No. Uh, they were brought to North America by European colonists. So that means he had to be harvesting apples from trees, like from seeds that were left behind by these army guys or previous explorers or whatever. I don't think. Yeah, they did. It's it's awake now. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's it's. Oh wait, native North America. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't. I, no, 
they're not. Um, so either this. But what about Johnny Appleseed? This, well, yeah, exactly. So he he was the basically this. We have a clear timeline here between Johnny Appleseed and this movie. We know that Johnny Appleseed takes place before this movie because of the apples, and that's the the clearest like. Hold on. Because this is before Transcontinental Railroad. Johnny Appleseed. American missionary. What a nerd. Yeah, okay. So it does work. It does work out like that. Okay. It does work out like that. Uh, I don't... I don't... Obviously, it still doesn't really make a ton of sense. But... Sure. Uh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. We'll hand wave away the apples. What, what fruits are native to North America? Certainly, there are not too many fruits like that that are native to well the desert um but like you know tomatoes are native to north america we tomatoes? think of it yeah we think of italian cuisine as always having red sauce the romans did not have red sauce the italians did not have tomatoes until like christopher columbus and company brought them back uh to italy well, shit. and said like put this on a pizza uh, <laughs> <laughs> put this on a pizza Put this that, on a pizza. Like, uh... Christopher Columbus's one positive contribution to the world is pizza with red sauce on it. Okay. That's... There we go. That is the moral for today's story. No. No, it's not. But it is kind of interesting to think about you have this movie where the American settlers are unequivocally the bad guys. And I, I wanted to... I wanted to... I, I kind of thought the, the colonel was going to have a, a, a heel face turn. I thought there was going to be a moment where he was going to be like, uh, you know, like the one good guy out of the bunch. But no, it's made very clear he's the bad guy, he's head of the bad guys, and he's going to continue being the bad guy. Uh, yeah, anyway. but I, he gave up in the end, though. Well, yeah, but he's still the antagonist. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. I mean, it's it's more than one person as an antagonist here. It's sort of just the entirety of the colonization of the Western United States. But it's the way he's presented at first made me think like, oh, this guy is going to be, you know, this guy's going to be like, he's going to take the horse under his wing, you know, sort of thing. And you almost thought he did, but then he puts him on the post, you know. Anyway, this move, this one's way over time. Uh, tomorrow's our anniversary. Actually, in 10 minutes is our anniversary. And uh, we're going to be watching The Princess Bride. So that's the next uh, episode. Is that a joint cho choice, or...? I don't know. I've lost track of whose choice it is. Um, and I don't think it's important. I'll, I'll, I'll take that choice, because this one's definitely yours. Yes. Um, and then <clears throat> it's, you know, I'll, I'll call it mine, and then we'll go back to yours, or, or whatever. I, I think that still tracks, because French Dispatch was yours, right? Yes. Yeah, and then Beetlejuice would have been mine, because we didn't have a... Yeah, okay. Uh, logistics aside, uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the show if you uh, want to see more real list or just random shenanigans. This is the community channel, so you never really know what you're going to get. You can get dog um, videos and cat videos. Dog videos <laughs> from Gloria. Um, uh, random Noida streams from me, I guess. Uh, Gmod rail fanning, regular rail fanning. Uh, uh, whatever the hell else gets posted here. Oh, the community playdates. Uh, th those get streamed. Anyway, yeah, we'll, we'll see you next week. Like if you liked it and comment if you've seen this movie. Bye! Bye!